Good morning, RuneScape. I was not going to make an update video today, but RuneScape keeps putting up updates. And this one is quite huge. We got Bounty Hunter changes and the Forestry beta. Now, we did cover Bounty Hunter Q&A quite deeply, but there's actually a lot of new stuff in here. A lot of things that I didn't even think would be coming to the game so soon, and some changes on boosting. If you guys see the, I don't even want to call it drama to put power to it, but the conversation that Skill Specs and Oda were having uh, between social media about how Oda was boosting his account to unlock armor and how uh, uh, J Skill Specs didn't really like that. And there is actually an answer in this blog from Old School RuneScape, and that was so fast. Also, I want to cover the game jam. It's it was uh, updated two days ago. That's where the J mods get together and make really cool stuff they want to see in the game. Some of it's wilderness related. It just goes deep. Well, not, we're not going to cover it today. It's long, but do expect me to cover the new game jam. It is, oh man, it's so spicy. Either way, let's jump into another bounty hunter blog. Y'all ready, dude? Okay, first issues raised. Players have not received, uh, reported not receiving the difference in points because they are nerfing the point value for unlockables. We've released a hotfix, and I think it was actually going on 30 minutes where they shut the server down for 45 minutes-ish. So that is fixed now, hopefully. Also, players have reported visual issues with pathing and a lot of dead clicks, which is always a bad time. And they are going to be cold fixing that later. So it's not fixed yet, but eventually it will be. So here is the change log. We've already went over some of the changes in Bounty Hunter. Quick little recap here uh, so for those who just want to dash and bank in the middle of a fight and then head on back we've now added a, a two minute timer when re-entering the crater from 16 six seconds to 15 seconds so you have a little bit longer in between target fights to re-grab your food so you don't miss out and get a penalty you also get a six seconds of immunity after rogues from spawning into a crater. We already went all over that, but that's for the noobs who don't want to get killed on login. Just watch that Torvesta video. Oh my god, people are getting melted by claws and full Torva. Uh, and for those who'd rather huddle in the lobby than fight your next target, rest assured that skipping an unschooled target will no longer contribute to your skip limit. Also, I believe they fixed the UI so you can see when you're going to get a penalty for skipping, uh, which hey, they just covered it right there. And uh, of course, Purdue's in the lobby. Corrupted warriors are going to be better off. Uh, they're going to be not wandering as much. The lobbies are fixed a bit. Blighted items are usable in there. And here are the changes to the new items you can get from the rewards. Current cost on the left. New cost on the right. So the Vesta body, 200 less points. Skirt. We're not going to go over all of them, but just, just take a gander. Obviously, there's some big changes. Vesta longsword's 100 points less. Zuriel, for whoever is getting Zuriel. I don't know who is, bro. <laughs> I'm not sure, but whoever is, it's it's a it's a bit cheaper as well. So, XP lamps, you get one per instead of a uh, two per lamp, now you get one per. So, good stuff there. You get your things a little bit faster for those noobs just constantly dying, such as myself. We've also made a few changes last week. Firstly, weapon abuse and cosmetic kits are now kept on death, thankfully. Uh, if you manage to purchase one of these items and lose them, uh, we made this change last Friday. You can get refunded enough points for one copy of any of the items you've already obtained. Uh, also, we've removed the 75 attack requirement from the Stanley's Warhammer, which only requires 75 strength to equip. Very good, very good, very good. Now, I know all that stuff we kind of already knew. The points, that's good to understand, actually see what the changes were. Uh, that's not it for Bounty Hunter. But first, we go into Forestry which they're going to be having an open beta for Forestry, the new woodcutting expansion coming to Old School RuneScape, pretty much my future retirement as I am a born Fletcher slash woodcutter. And if you want to try this out, Monday 5th of June, you'll be able to try it Forestry out for yourself. The beta worlds will be highlighted in blue. And if you guys want me to go try out the beta worlds, do a little, I don't know, first peek of a video. I'm just having fun here. I'm feeling like a RuneScape. We're not a PvP or anymore, and it's beautiful. Not that I don't like to clap cheeks, so maybe you'll get a nice pre-reveal video from old Minty on the new forestry update. Uh, I'm kind of excited for it. I do enjoy me some woodcutting. Uh, please note if you're accessing these beta worlds, you'll need to restart the client in order to access this. Uh, there you go. Uh, for the best forestry experience, we re recommend making your way to a classic woodcutting spot in Draenor Village where you're going to find the freaky forester himself. I guess that's where it's home. 
area is and Draenor kind of suitable. Speak to him and he'll tell you everything you need to know about forestry and the new events you can take part in. He'll also give you a free sample of anima infused bark for you to spend on some rewards and there's a quick option to open up the forestry interface. Very cool. Very cool. There's also uh, there's quite a bit to try this beta, so before you grab an axe and get stuck, we recommend having you look at the previous forestry news post, which I think we covered. And it goes pretty deep. Tease, boost, a bunch of stuff. Some I didn't want, some I did want. We're not going to get in that right now, but look at this. New tree mechanics. I Who would have thought that we'd have new tree mechanics? To help support group play and reduce competitions, trees will now respawn or despawn on a timer that activates after the first cut and regenerates if the player stops cutting the tree before it's fully chopped. Tree regeneration. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool. A timer's length is based on the average time each different type of tree currently lasts. You know who's going to like this? Bots. But the question is, do we still I'm, I'd assume we have woodcutting bots. It feels like people can bot so many different things in the game that make way more money. But they still go ahead and just still farm the hell out of trees. Honest work, I guess. Uh, in addition, players chopping the same tree will get an invisible woodcutting bonus that scales with the number of players. Oh. So not only is it going to be great for bots, you're going to be able to demolish a tree with teamwork. <laughs> now, of course, if bots don't ruin this, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, you got a new forestry forestry kit and a new currency. They're bringing um, crypto into this, or what's going down here? So you can kind of see some of the gear here. You got the lumberjack. and the, I don't know if this is new. I feel like this is not old. Maybe the hat. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. Kind of looks like I've seen that before. The new wearable items will let you store all kind of useful gadgets from day one, but any good workman knows that they must upgrade their tools. You can now craft new additions to your forestry kit using ex existing materials combined with the items from the Freaky Forester store. To get your hand on these wares, you'll need to be using untradeable currency only found in the forest, anima-infused bark. So that's the currency, bark. Okie dokie. Uh, during the beta, the, forest, the Freaky Forester will provide you with some bark to trade, Nice, so you get a little little, uh, little currency there on start. And then we got, uh, here are the events. There are four events to test in the beta. We got Rising Roots. Roots will suddenly attack, trying to protect their wood brethren. <laughs> Cut them down for experience and some bark. Flowering Tree. Bees will appear alongside new flowers that want to bloom. Find the right two flowers and move pollen between for experience. I hope that's funner than it sounds. That one sounds... Awful, but I'll be trying out all this anyways, so don't worry. Uh, sorry. Uh, struggling saplings help the poor sapling grow big and strong, create the right combination of mulch. Also doesn't sound very fun at all. I like the first one, though. Uh, point and click slap logs, you know. Leprechaun. A friendly leprechaun has appeared. He'll be able to take your woodcutting resources straight to the bank. Continuing into forestry, we got leaves, campfires, and tea brewing, so... Uh, leaves will drop from wood cutting as well as logs, and you have production, boost production skill, gathering, produce, uh, boost to gathering skill level, power, increases the power of the effect, and the duration of the effect, it sounds like a, a lot to deal with there with the, the tea boosting. You utilize it in two ways, campfires and tea brewing, so you can create a campfire, have your homies sit around it, and you just get a nice buff, the dark and darker vibes, or you can drink a little tea for a personal boost, we got increased clue drop chance from monsters and skilling. Pretty sick. Chance to save ranged ammo and runes. Boosted minigame reward points and boosted slayer points and superior monster spawn chance. Seems like you're kind of going to be forced to utilize these boosts because they're pretty insane. A little wacky. little wacky, bro. Slayer points, minigame rewards. I mean, it's cool. It's something out of the box for sure. Also, we got the Forester Shop and Rewards, Log Basket, Log Brace, Forestry Outfit, Lumberjack Outfit, and the Funky Shaped Log, in case you want one. Uh, and apparently the Two-Handed Axe will not be hitting the beta. Not yet, but hopefully soon, because Two-Handed Axe sounds pretty sick. I'm going to be skipping the mobile issues for the phone and all this stuff. Uh, they're, they're working on it June 7th, get a client out, so... 
Let's get into the real juice. The real juice here, bro, where they go over the EP system and their decision on what they're going to do with people boosting in Bounty Hunter. First, starting with the earning, the earning potential system, the EP system for short. If you don't know, that's when you just sit in the Bounty Creator, and if you have a certain amount of risk, you get a certain amount of EP uh, we'll go into a deeper. It used to be if you had 76k way back in the day and you sat out somewhere in a danger zone, you could farm dragon full helms. This is going to be a bit different. The reason they're doing this is to mitigate some of the losses from all the noobs dying. Because <laughs> you do lo you lose a lot when you die. You kind of lose a lot when you win. Right? Sure, you get their items, but you also lose your potions, you lose your food, and thankfully you get a kill to make up for it. The other person gets nothing. PvP. Don't forget it is the biggest money sink in the game. Don't let those killers talk trash, okay? We are sinking so much money. Some of it, no one loots. The wilderness just goes right back in the wild. You know, 100% money sink there. So, so now that we're, we're well aware of the GP generation from Bounty Hunter and the problematic past it's had, they're going to be very cautious about he, how EP is handled in the future, which is always something you want to show or want, want to know in your, the game you main. Uh, and they bring up the 76k exploit back in the day where you could farm dragon full helms. And so here's what they're going to be doing for EP. To be eligible to earn EP, your wrist wealth must be above a minimum value, which is lower than 76k. 50,000 gold. How poor are people, bro? I guess it's for the noobs. It's for little mage bow strength amulet boys. Uh, if you're eligible, your EP value will increase 2% for every minute you spend in the crater, only if you have a target assigned. Dying to your target will increase your EP by 10%. So on death, if you are horrible, you still get some sort of bonus. Of course, it can only happen every 15 minutes, and it's a maximum of 40% EP. Successfully getting a kill will cash in all of your EP, and you'll get a bounty hunter crate. A loot box. They're bringing back loot boxes. Uh, obtaining a bounty crate will reset your EP to zero. Uh, in addition, your EP value will not be reset on death or leaving the crater. And if it's your target, you'll get 10% more. You cannot gain EP value if you don't meet the minimum risk. You cannot gain EP value if you're currently not on matchmaking penalty. Or if you're on a matchmaking penalty, you cannot gain EP if you're not in the crater. And uh, you'll receive a notification in your chat box about the EP you're eligible to earn. So here's what the crater loot sh should look like here. GP value. So if you have under 20%, you get a 20,000 GP crate. 100% is 500k. Uh, this is weird. I won't lie. I was not expecting this. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not. I'm not hating on it. I am simply letting Jagex cook. They are in the driver's seat. Jesus has taken the wheel, and we are given EP bounty hunter crates. <laughs> and I don't know why. I'm a little depressed that it's capped at at 500k. I guess there should be a cap, but it's like if you go to a lottery. You're always thinking in the back of your mind, what if it's the Mega Millions? You're never thinking, oh, it's capped at 50 bucks. I don't know. It kind of takes the excitement out of it. So either way, that's what should be hitting the game. And I believe it's hitting the game next week. So it's coming by pretty soon. They are building Bounty Hunter very fast. But will this be in line with the boosting happening in Bounty Hunter? Well, they cover the boosting. And they cover it quite deeply. So... So their opinion is they're very disappointed in the players that are boosting and they don't like how they're exploiting the lower population of certain worlds to sell kills during, and it's diluting the matchmaking pool for players who want to enjoy Bounty Hunter legitimately and ultimately griefing those who've been waiting a long time, which we have been. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense there. Uh, and then it just kind of covers like, okay, some people do boost in like maybe... Tombs of Amascus to get their friends some sort of achievement, you know, speed hunter achievement. But when it impacts multiple people like Bounty Hunter, you're pretty much just griefing everybody waiting for a target kill. So that's why they are kind of set in this way. And what are they gonna do? Well, from tomorrow, we're gonna be we're gonna begin to issue punishments to players involved in boosting in Bounty Hunter. If we detect that you are buying kills selling kills, or even participating in a boosting chat or clan, you will be banned. They are very strict. They have drawn the line. They have given you the fence not to cross. It is in words verbatim, do not boost. And I, I think if they're going to be adding an EP system, this has got to be the way they go about it. There's no way they could be uh, in the gray area here if they're going to start giving out GP rewards. And 
I always knew they probably would. I always told, hey, let Jagex cook. I'm sure they're around the corner. Everyone just itching and tweaking. Don't believe. And here they are. And here's what we get. We get banned boosters and we get rewards for people who are um, just dying a lot, pretty much. <laughs> Which, hey, if you like it, that's good. I uh, I don't know, man. What do you guys think? Should we uh, be incredibly harsh to boosters? Is that the way forward? Is that the only way forward? Also, they've changed up the emblems a little bit. Kind of a nice change here. So it still works to where if you kill somebody at 2, H, 2 BH points and your emblem levels up by tier, if it's a target, uh, the, the kill st milestones here for target kills are the same. Uh, but killing a target with an emblem of their own no longer rewards additional bonus points. So if you kill someone at a tier 9, you don't get extra points. That does sound bad until you realize, and this should have been in the game right away, because when you kill someone, you don't get their emblem. It just disappears. So now if you die with a high tier emblem, their example is a tier 8, you will, or a tier 9, when you die, it'll downgrade to a tier 8. Beautiful. Beautiful. No 10 kill streaks. Crazy luck. Not getting one hit by these crazy armors. I can't even understand how a noob would do that. 10 kills in a row if you're a noob. There's no way. You got a little trackpad, no F keys. <laughs> nah, it's not happening. So that is an amazing update right there for the emblems. Very great. Very good. Very wise. Also, they are going to be changing the uh, Vesta, Stadius, and Zuriel's armor. So pretty much, they reduced the crush bonus on Vesta, and they doubled, almost doubled the, the stab and slash bonus. Uh, Stadius, they did the, the difference. They, they reduced the stash and slash, a stash and stab and slash, Jesus, from 3 to 1. And they doubled the crush, except for the helm. It's only plus 1. But for the plate, it's, it's double, 7 to 14, a little bit of prayer bonus, and then fire the temper to legs. And a little bit of prayer bonus, which, okay, prayer bonus is fine. The biggest thing, though, is Zuriel's, because Mage is pretty much useless unless you're rushing or you're trying to do some sort of crazy combo with a harmonized staff. But finally, Zuriel's has something that is usable. So they've given it magic damage. The hood is 1%, top is 3%, bottom is 2%. So all in all, it's a 5% max hit. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. I want to see a volatile video out soon. I, I hope Reese makes it. He's been making great content. I'm sure he has all this unlocked. The guy's a god. Cannot wait. Finally. I think now Zuriel's will be very, very sought after here. Probably not as sought after as Vesta. And I don't think Stadius will be sought after at all. <laughs> like, why would you? But Zuriel's? Very nice, very nice. So, one last change here. They got the Vesta Spear. Usually how the Vesta Spear works, 50% of your attack energy is used up and you can uh, damage 16 targets, 8 tiles around you. Remember, that's not going to be very useful in the craters and then you're immune to melee attacks for 5 seconds. But this was back when, you know, Dead Man Mode was around. You can get these weapons. So it had some use case. Not anymore. Absolutely useless. So they said, you know, we're going to change it. We're going to rework the special attack. You hit one enemy, you impale him, takes 100% of your max hit, and then you perform a second hit for 25 to 75% of the initial damage as you yank the spear back out. And then for some reason you get 5 seconds of a vulnerability, which I like that they're rechanging the Vesta spear. I cannot wait to watch a video on it. I don't know why they would still keep the immunity, though, to melee in a 1v1. In my mind, doesn't make a ton of sense, but I'm not really going to die on that hill. I don't care that much. It's just weird. So that is pretty much everything going on in Bounty Hunter and Forestry. And then, you know, some small changes we're not going to go over. So to quickly summarize that up, some new beautiful Bounty Hunter updates that we all covered. Reduced cost in the shop, which is incredible. Forestry updates coming out. I'll be making a video on that. The release, I'm very excited, June 5th. Uh, get all your, your goodies here. Of course, we're going to have EP next week. And, of course, do not boost in Bounty Hunter. You will get banned. All right, boys. Hopefully you enjoyed the new update. I got a lot to cover, including the Game Jam. Subscribe, drop a like, and I will see you guys in the next episode.